So, E3 2018 has arrived, <laughs> and oh boy, is it a good one. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. And Brody and... You wanted Skate 4? Well, guess what? We're giving you Session. You wanted Elder Scrolls 6? Well, guess what? We're giving you a 10 second clip of Mountains. You wanted to play Fallout 76 right now? Well, guess what? You have to wait? Oh, what's up with that? Uh, what else we got? Uh, Spider-Man? Spider-Man looks sick. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that one. But the moment you've all been waiting for finally arrives. Drumroll, please. That's right, you guessed it, we wanted it, they brought it. It's Cuphead DLC! One fucking life, I could do it. One fucking life, I could do it, just concentrate. Fucking concentrate, watch out for these baseballs. Watch out for the fucking baseballs! Oh my god, I can't go anywhere! Ah, god, fuck! I can do it! This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it! Oh my god, I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna fucking do it! Do not shoot out any more baseballs before you fucking die! They're coming, they're coming! Oh my god, I'm a no! Yes! Studio, NSFW have taken center stage and stole the show. Oh. It, it's, uh, can you believe it? It's Cuphead in the delicious last course. And I just want to take a few seconds. I just want to take a minute. Just a, just a few words. I just want to say a few words. I won't take long. Just a few minutes. I just want to say, I told you so. I told you so. I, I may not have said Cuphead DLC at E3. I may have just mentioned. DLC in general, but watch my Cuphead video, I told you all. So boom, who would have guessed it? We got Cuphead looking beautiful, may I say, almost as if Studio MDHR got a bigger budget for this single DLC than the entire base game. It's not like they sold 2 million copies in 8 minutes or anything. We got Mugman experiencing what we call in the gaming world, character development, as instead of just being the Luigi of the series, he's become an absolute madman. I am a savage. I am a legend. I am... A madman. You never know what I'm going to do next. We've got our new playable character. Can you believe it? New playable character, Miss Chilis, and oh god, we're gonna get porn about, aren't we? Ah, uh, yep. See, Elvis is already planning a people ruin Cuphead sequel. How did I know? How did I know? And then finally, the thickest daddy of them all, the Jolly Chef Salt Baker. I'm assuming he's going to be taking on Pork Ryan's role in this DLC, which is probably for the best, as I, I guess you could do less damage with a salt shaker than a large dirty pig man, but I'm sure one of you creeps will prove me wrong. No, it's all very exciting. We've got a new aisle, a new bosses, new weapons, a new playable character. But who's going to play that DLC when most people haven't even gone past the first aisle? Now, that's not my only query, but let's think about it. They may have sold over 2 million copies by December, just three months after the release. Let's take a quick look at the achievement list. Now, I know the game also came out on Steam and the Microsoft Windows Store. We don't really talk about that. Most of the game sales were on the Xbox One. We, we oh, that was the wrong button. So why don't we just have a quick look on the achievements list? See, we got say, power, bounty, ball, soul save. Complete the game on normal. Six point... 6.81% of play... Well, that's just embarrassing. Less than 7% of people have completed the game on Xbox One. 7%?! It's not even the expert mode, it's the normal mode. Like, it's, it's a rare achievement! It's got a diamond! A rare achievement! Now you may be thinking, Hey, Knockout Dick, you haven't even completed the game yourself. Who are you to talk? No, well, you're right. I do still actually play the game a few times a month. I'm just bad. Uh, let's take a look. So, only 11.4% of people have defeated every boss in Inkwell Isle 3. Now, with the high gamer score on these, I guess some of them are a bit ambitious, and the game developers knew that they were going to be hard to do. But let's just have a look at some of the ones I've done. Uh, like uh, uh, this one, uh, defeat a boss. 75% <laughs> of gamers have unlocked this. Oh, no! Are you actually shitting me? A quarter of the people who have played Cuphead on Xbox or Microsoft Store haven't even completed one boss fight. Fuck me, it's worse than I thought. I mean, it might just be because people have been jumping in local co-op and they're like, I don't give a fuck about Cuphead, but only three quarters of people, a whole, a whole quarter of the people who have booted up Cuphead on either Xbox or Windows haven't even completed a boss. 
Ah! I'll be back. I just need a quick lie down. So with that being said, will the Cuphead DLC sell very well if people haven't completed the game? Or will people just be intrigued to see what the new bosses, new aisle, new character, and new weapons have to offer? Talking of the new weapons and character, I wonder if Eva will actually be able to be used in the original game or the original levels. I'm gathering they probably won't let that happen as the new weapons may take down the original bosses much easier as they're going to be designed in different ways to be used in new situations. And it would somewhat tarnish the original story and run of bosses, I guess. But who knows? That's just a side thought. A game inside thought. Oh, God. A lot of people will be purchasing this DLC, especially if it's cheap, out of curiosity, and also because the first bosses will mostly be in Inquil Isle 1 difficulty rather than picking up from where Isle 3 left off. Now that I say it, I wonder if they're actually going to be charging for the DLC, uh, considering the game itself was like £16 or I'm guessing $20. Are they just going to be charging like £4 or £5 for it? I have no idea. And fuck playing Dr. Cow Robots level bosses for the whole DLC. La laser head? Oh, God, magnets! Magnets! Ah! It does sort of beg the question though, considering the DLC is going to be set on just one aisle, whether the running guns and boss fights are going to get harder as we progress through the island, or they're all just going to stay at one moderate difficulty. Also, the DLC name and the introduction to Chef Saltbaker suggests it's like a desert related island. <laughs> I wrote desert accidentally, and I actually said it. I meant dessert. Kind of like that one boss fight with the sweet lady. I'm really good at remembering names. Because the delicious last course name is obviously a play on desserts. But will this actually be the last we see of Cuphead, considering it's called The Last Course? Probably not considering how popular the game has become. But there becomes a time when it's best to stop while they're ahead. Examples of this include the Dead Rising series. Oh god, Dead Rising 4, why? Why? Crash Bandicoot? Ah, oh, why did you carry on after Naughty Dog went? Ah, oh, Jesus. Spyro? Oh, what? what? What is this? Lara Croft? Oh, now her boobs, uh, they're realistic. I don't like this. And oh boy, the list goes on. Let's just hope the Studio 2298 don't beat a dead horse of this one, and the DLC for Cuphead is just as colorful, creative, fun, and challenging as the first one. If you can't tell, I'm trying to play Dr. Cal's robot right now. I could feel my blood pressure rising. Thanks for watching, and remember to share your thoughts about the DLC with me in the comments. As always, remember to like the video, and also, I told you so. I told you so. I did. I told you so. Go and watch my video. I told you so. It's not even plugged in. Hey, Bram, I hate to bring it up, but remember that time I told you that they were going to bring out Cuphead DLC and you were like, no way. Hey, well, did you watch E3? No, there's no point trying to fight it. It's happening. I told you so. I, to I told you. I told you so, okay?